welcome to What's the Script, the podcast where we try and guess the plots of films we've never seen. My name is Stephen Buchanan. And I'm Stuart McPherson. How are you, Stuart McPherson? I'm okay. How are you? No bad. Sweet. Sweet chat, brother. What have you been up to? (laughs) Fuck, I was going to say. What have you been up to? Oh, this and that. Bobbing around. Mm. You know. (laughs) Nothing nothing of note. Nothing to report. Been playing golf. Went to an escape room. What's your handicap, bro? Lapsed. Ever heard the phrase lapsed? No. Not played for 10 years, and now they've got a new handicap system. Oh, really? So, I don't have one. Used to be five. Wow. Don't know what that means, either. Cool. You should have said something better then. (laughs) Should have have lied. I went to golf a few times in my my day. And that wasn't enough to master the sport? Didn't master it in those couple of weeks that I went. Um, (laughs) It's a shame. Usually a couple of weeks someone's mastered golf by then. You would think so. Easy peasy. All it is is swinging a metal pole at a ball. Mm. And you hit the ball into a hole. Mm. One time I technically got a hole in one. What's this te- technical thing? I'm glad you asked. Were you because at, uh, mini golf? No, I've had plenty of those. <laughs> I've had plenty of those too. This You're was on a genuinely quite a proud of that. Aren't you? Par three. Uh huh. Which is that's the place for it. The place for it. My, I was playing with my mate who was a lot better than me, so he gave me a shot every hole. So you got a two. Well, don't say that. It's two. I got <laughs> you got a hole in two. I got a hole in one on the scorecard. Net one. Yeah. Didn't I? Still getting a two if you you've only played golf for two weeks and you call it a metal pole. That's pretty impressive. I know it's called a club. <laughs> well, that's not what you said to me. <laughs> but it's a physical metal pole, isn't it? However, what I didn't tell you, do you know how I got that two? You cheat? No. <laughs> Happy Gilmore swing. Really? And an old guy, this was at his club, and an old guy <laughs> kicked me off. <laughs> <laughs> what a great. He said, uh, you can't be doing that here, mate. And I was like, oh, I got a hole in one butt. And he was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and also you didn't. <laughs> and also it was a two. That's harsh to get kicked off for a happy girl more. He basically said... Was he a wank? This he basically, yeah. He this is the guy. problem with the game. He basically why said golf. to Gary... He said to my mate, that wee guy could never come back here. Was it Gary that we play football with? Yep. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Uh, was he doing happy girl moves and shit? Nah. No, no, he was frankly embarrassed that I was yeah. doing it. If I took you to my home club and you started doing Happy Gilmore, <laughs> that would be embarrassing, to be fair. If you don't know what a Happy Gilmore is, you basically do about... Don't you know films? Four... <laughs> <laughs> basically do four or five steps, run up and swing it as hard as mm. you can and hit the ball. Great. Very fun. And that was golf chat. That concludes this week of golf. The funny chat. thing is, I've actually been up to loads of stuff, but I'm not prepared to talk about it on the, uh, <laughs> on the podcast. Um, yeah, have you you been up to anything? Got uh, just golf chat. That's that's cool. all I've got this week. Just pa- golfing in the past. Mm. How long ago was that? Oh, uh, ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It still is a good anecdote, man. Thanks, mate. You should do stand up about that, mate. <laughs> requires a lot of people to know what Happy Gilmore is. I think most people would, though. I've got a joke about Monsters, Inc. at the minute that really oh. sinks or swims, depending on if you've seen Monsters, Inc. I love Monsters, Inc. Yeah, well, it's for you. It's for you, baby. What would you say? I'm talking about shaving my back, and I say how weird it feels, and you feel like the one that gets the sock on it. You know, the one where they've oh, got yeah. like, the cone, and they shave him and everything like that. It's part of yeah. a wider thing. I'm not just, like, hitting <laughs> out with that. You got a hairy back, bro? Yeah, man. Yeah. Leave a comment below if you're into, <laughs> if you're into hairy backs. <laughs> Well, speaking of hairy backs, Stu, what film did we watch this week? I reckon they've both got hairy backs, Travolta and Cage. Cage, Hairy guys. Cage has got the hairiest back possible. Hairy, barrel-chested guys. There's a lot to enjoy, I thought. John Travolta's got hairs. (laughs) We never never spoke about his class. My favourite ever moment, like meme viral video. Wickedly talented. Wickedly talented. One and and only. only Adele Adele Dazim. Dazim. That's like something we would come out with. Fucking amazing. And that was at the literal Oscars. It's fucking amazing. Someone should have slapped him for that. Yeah. <laughs> Adele Dazim should have run up and slapped him. This week, uh-huh. Steve, we tried to guess the plot of the movie Face Off. Enjoy the episode, guys. Face Off. What do you know about that film? Here's what I know, Stu. Before I looked at the poster, I knew Nicolas Cage. I knew John Travolta. And I knew... Something about 
switching faces. Mm. I think these cunts <laughs> switch faces. <laughs> <laughs> In short. In short, I think these guys, I don't know how it's going to happen. Mm. I don't know why. <laughs> but these guys, I don't know if they physically chop their face off and then switch it, or if they just surgically make it as if it looks like the other person. Yeah. It's something the like fiction, that, isn't it? In the fiction of the film. Yeah. Well, that was my first thought. Was My first thought was, like, is it like a Silence of the Lambs, skin somebody's puss off and then put it on somebody else's? But then that would look... Fucked up. You, you would You'd be able, able to tell. tell, wouldn't you? Yeah. So I don't think it's that. So I've gone down the, sh- the surgery route. So maybe they swap brains? But the swap element, that scares me because that makes... I've got one of them gets the other one's face. Not that they swap faces. I've got that, but then I've got the other one to Switch retaliate. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you could do. I could do better. Yeah, that's funny. Well, we'll see what happens. Because I've got the... We'll put the poster up here as well. Um, that's it's two the, guys with half, poster. half their heat in darkness. I mean, you're saying two guys, John Travolta and Nick Cage, isn't it? Those two guys, Those in two particular, guys. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're what? just two guys, Dave, like me and you. <laughs> what I was trying to work out is... We've who... got the same face as well. <laughs> 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 what I was trying to work out is who's the baddie from the poster. I'd say John Travolta looks a lot more evil than Nick Cage in this poster. That's interesting, because I've gone as Cage as the baddie. Really? But then I started second guessing and I was like, is this when they've switched faces? So <laughs> You've is got Nick... in your fucking head this so, time. Uh, yeah, is Nick Cage in John Travolta's body at this point? I don't know what to believe. And John Travolta is the baddie because Nick Cage is the baddie. Yeah, or... maybe John Travolta looks so evil because he's Nicolas Cage. Because he's Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Or is Nicolas Cage not switched yet and he is the goodie and John Travolta is the baddie as John Travolta? I've not got answers for you, Steve. They're all valid questions because we don't have any of the pertinent information. No, not at yeah. all. There is know, a tagline like on that. the poster yeah, as well, Stu. Uh, in order to trap him, he must become him. Mm. Very evocative. Hmm. Yeah. Trap. Trap. Yeah, trap word, sounds really. weird because yeah. it's not like in not order like, to catch him. Yeah. Like, as if he's a detective, which I've got. That's what I've got as well, because we've both got very limited imaginations. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. What do you know about this? Same stuff. I knew it was those two boys. And I've heard of this film, but no more than what you had alluded to. Like, people talk... Yeah. I think it's going to be a daft laugh. Yeah, strip it. In my mind, Straight it's away. not a million miles from, like, Con Air in my mind and vibe no. of, like... I think it's going to no. be one of the 90s movies that we don't get anymore that were just, like, fun... Yeah, and dumb. This to me screams a Channel Five film on like a <laughs> Saturday night, just yeah, after the pub face off on. Yeah, yeah. Let's stick that on. Yeah, it's gonna be shite, but it'll be funny. I think it'll be like Connor. Yeah, I expect to enjoy this. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll be loving every they, second of this. They, we'll the be premise. we'll be fucking dining and <laughs> laughing this shit. They, they saw us coming. They never made this film. It's funny because we like go. You know, movies like Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, fine. Or, yeah, you know, like stuff right. like that. The Godfather, you yeah, thought was all right. all right. But fucking Con Air and Face Off were like, that was amazing. Yeah. The fucking was, film. Con Air's better than Godfather. Easy. <laughs> um, should we get into numbers? Yeah. I've got 1996 as the year. I've got 1992. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes? 83%. I've gone 65. Right, we shite her. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, bit Yeah, hard to tell. Really bad. Run time, I've got 1 hour 51. 1 hour 46. Okay. Certificate, 15, always a 15. 15, Depends yeah. if we see them surgically cut the guy's face off. That could push it that to an could 18. could be 18, yeah. <laughs> or it could be 12. Yeah. Titties. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Have you got John Candy as an actor? <laughs> That's what we're coming on to now, actors. I really wanted... I was like, writing this, I was like, come on, Stu, let's get some fucking new names in the pot here. You can't just guess John Malkovich every week and hope. Like, you can't... You must have heard of a few actors. So I was was trying to expand my horizons and I thought, actually, I can't be fucking arsed and I need to get there to the studio. (laughs) So I've actually got all the classics. But next week or something, I'll have thought of some good ones. I've got a couple of new ones. I bet you've got Lawrence Fishburne. No, I've got the other favourite. 
person. J.K. Simmons. <laughs> He's fast becoming one of your favourites. I've got John Malkovich. I've like got John already, Malkovich. First already name on the team sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got Forrest Whitaker. He, he's a... <laughs> He's a favourite. Do you just love him because his name's Forrest? Yeah. I think that's yeah. part of it, right? Uh, it opens my imagination. Also, so much. you never see him and stuff. Also, Whitaker's like a kind of Scottish Stephen footballer. <laughs> James Forrest and Stephen Whitaker. <laughs> Somebody's made <laughs> made a footballer to piss off all old firm fans. <laughs> <laughs> I've got John Malkovich, Lawrence Fishburne, Susan Sarandon, Morgan Freeman, mm. Meg Ryan, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Con that's Ayers, a good Dave one. Chappelle. That's a good one. Can I just say, you overestimate how many films Dave Chappelle is in. He's yeah. in like Con Air and that's it. And fucking you're just lucky. I, you're lucky in, I've not put Barbara Streisand in this. Uh, he was in The Nutty Professor. Yeah, I think that's literally the three films <laughs> he was in. Yeah, Star is Born. When I saw him in that, I thought, fuck it, I need to start guessing uh, this guy more often. He must be in loads. He's in heaps, this guy. He must be in loads. But I think Even though he famously I, went AWOL well, for years. I think because yeah. he like, obviously was, then he do it for 10 years in showbiz like like A Star is Born is the first one he's been in since the fucking Nutty Professor (laughs) (laughs) that's some movie back catalogue Nutty Professor that CV A Star is Born (laughs) big jump there Uh, I've got Danny Trejo love it Margot Martindale character actress Margot Martindale (laughs) Um, she's they mention her in Bojack Horseman all the time John Hurt Ever heard of him? <laughs> no. You don't want to... You leave something for Roger. I don't want to spunk Come my on. load if he's actually in it. Uh, he's Although I guess he won't be in it, so you're all right, actually. No, probably won't be. It. Well, he's... I don't even know who that is. I haven't heard of him. The dad in Home Alone. <laughs> of course. Okay. Uh, Steve Buscemi. Of course. Con Air's Steve yeah, Buscemi. That's not a bad joke. Forrest Whitaker. Um, character names. I've gone big on character names this week. Long list? Quite long. Or big names? Long list. As in syllables. Okay, cool. Kevin, Troy, Leopold, Angela, <laughs> Will, Sonia, John, Les, FBI agent, receptionist, and women in bar. Nice. Receptionist is always a good shout. I like a receptionist. They yep. never get a name. They never. They, they in movies, piece of shit. They're often used in movies, though, to convey a little bit of information. Oh yeah, exposition. Yeah, out their tits because yeah. they've got they hold all the information. They've yeah. got wee computer they screen. They can what rooms cunts are in. They're like, oh, he's in room fifty six. Not to want to butt in, but I think the only exception to that, perhaps, and I might be wrong, is Pussy Galore and James Bond. Was she, she a receptionist? Just, was she not just the receptionist? She just worked at the Ibis. <laughs> I think I've just I, I've seen a bit of a James Bond film where he's talking to Pussy Galore right. and she's behind a desk. Wow. So, mm, don't know about that. Don't recall. I don't remember that, that film, to be honest. I with don't you. know that. Yeah. No. I know James Bond. Like Money Moore. Penny was in a pretty admin role, wasn't she? What was she? Or maybe I'm thinking of Money Penny, actually. I picture her behind the desk. Money Penny. Yeah. Actually. There you go. Well, she had a name, so you're still, still right. You're on the money. Food oh, for thought. I forget it. I'll just call her receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that James Bond receptionist. That's, that's the name of the movie. <laughs> Stevie, should we have yours? Uh, Paul, Paula, Daniel, Danielle, <laughs> John, John Conrad, police officer and ambulance driver. Nice. No fireman? No, but that's a good shout. Coast Guard? No Coast Guard. <laughs> no, I'm not doing all the emergency The RNLI services. ain't going to be rocking up. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Park uh, Ranger. <laughs> Taglines. I've got three shite ones that I wrote there in this chair. I've got. I've went. I've tried to guess the ones before I looked at the poster. Right. I've tried to so guess. So I already know that you're ones. wrong. Yeah. No points for me for taglines, but I have got. Take your regular face off and put your game face on. <laughs> I've got face off, game on. Of course. Nothing's as it seems on the face of it. That is good. I like that. <laughs> that could have been the tagline. That could have been. Do you think this could have been the tagline? This movie will get you off your face. Because <laughs> no. of how class it is. You feel like you're... Because you're like, oh, this nut. is so class. This is like Eckies so, yeah. watching this film. This is a natural high, this movie. <laughs> I think it could be a natural high. <laughs> uh, it's time to face your biggest fear. Yourself. Mm, that's pretty good. Mysterious. Uh, I've got simply a time to face off the music. <laughs> you can tell that was written in this chair. 
literally the first. Is that your first... last one? That yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely crept in. Brilliant. Dialogue. This was written ahead of time, though, so it will be fantastic. Oh yeah, you've had all the time in the world to <laughs> I've write been this chiseling piece of this thing away for <laughs> for a while now. I've been at this taking this out of your own screenplay that you're writing. Yeah, I just I pop this on the anvil, knock it around, you know, try and improve it, <laughs> you tidy want, it up. You want to go first? Sure. I'm I actually looking don't at even your remember screen. what it is. I'm looking at your screen. There's a lot of lines in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a little back and forth. Um, all right. So in my movie, this is John Travolta. Set the scene for me. I'm setting it. He uh, <laughs> he's on the hunt for Nicolas Cage. He works for the FBI, and uh, nothing's working. He's frustrated in the case at this point, and he's going back to his big boss, and he's saying, "You know, we need to rethink things." Okay. He's going, I don't know, boss. Nothing's working. Nothing sticks on this son of a bitch. And boss goes, "I think you need to change track." I agree, but but how? He goes, "You let him come to you." He goes, "No, I got a better idea." I let me come to me. <laughs> what? You'll see. <laughs> I'm going to get his face, I'm boss. I'm going to put his face on my face. I'm going to put his pus on my pus, boss. <laughs> uh, great. great stuff. Thank you. Like it. I think this will boil down to who's chasing who. Aye, and whose faces week. are doing what. Yeah. I'm expecting it to be a very facial film. Yeah, facial. Facial. Facial recall. Yeah. doesn't really even work. No. Felt like it was going to be a pun, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't quite. <laughs> it doesn't. Just sort of rhymed a little. Not even nearly. Total facial. Total facial, the floor. Right. Let's I've hear your dialogue. Got... So, I'll give you a bit of context. Uh, Nicholas Cage chasing John Travolta. John Travolta's the baddie, so it's Nicholas Cage... <laughs> In his body, right? <laughs> so, Watching Steve's face, they're trying to get it straight in his. I'm trying in to your timeline, just because I'm doing impressions. Right, so hold on. Him. Right, John Travolta. Cage is chasing Travolta, but Cage looks like Travolta. Cage is chasing Travolta. Travolta's Cage is brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cage, Travolta's inside. Sh- so Cage. you think people have got each other's brains? It's like a Freaky Friday thing. Nah, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying brain as and that's the person who it is. <laughs> He's got his body okay. as well. I'm more confused than I need to be now, I think. I don't really think that is that much more far-fetched <laughs> than the face thing, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Brain would make more sense. Yeah. Because... I think it should be called Brain Off. Here's a question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds like a shite quiz show. <laughs> Here's a question... Are they, if they've switched faces, do they keep their own voice? Is it going to it's be a question John that will be answered in the film? John Travolta with Nick Cage's voice? I don't know. I feel like, obviously, if you're John Travolta you're playing. And yeah, it's yeah, easier, that'd be a pain easier in the just to let you have your own voice, I think. Yeah, but for the for this, if, that, if they've literally just changed faces, it makes no sense. Fuck knows. I mean, my film doesn't make much sense because in my version. John Travolta looks like Nicolas Cage, so Nicolas Cage is just doing the acting for both of them for most of it. So John Travolta is barely in this film. I don't think that will happen. I think they'll have to they're yeah. both big names. Yeah, and they're equal on the poster. Jo- John's name comes first. Fuck knows. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's hear your dialogue. <laughs> Give yourself up, John. He's just calling John. John as well. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself up, John. Why would I do that? The way I see it. We've both got something the other person wants. You've got my money, and I've got your face. <laughs> Great. There we go. Lovely. Bit of that. Right. I'm going to apply right into my plot. <laughs> bit of that. Bit of that. <laughs> a wee bit of that will sort you. Uh, again, I mean, I wrote this pretty quickly. I can't even remember what happens in it, so we'll find out together. I'm excited. I need you to be listening to this so you can actually pick apart the shit that doesn't even make sense in this little... Okay, I won't even laugh at the things you're saying, I'll just listen. It's the 90s, it's Washington, and Kevin Johnson is down on his luck. Kevin is an FBI operative who's trailing on-the-run fugitive Troy Daniels, but being bested at every turn. Kevin's never met a foe like Troy before, and if that's even his real name... No traditional FBI t- detective methods seem to work on this guy, and Kevin can never get close to shutting his butt down. For a wee while, for a while, we see 
His fr- not for a wee while. For a while, we see his frustrated efforts as Troy is able to live under the radar, being blasé and cool about it, and sometimes getting complacent for kicks. Frustrated, Kevin has become obsessed with the case. His wife's left him. He's got nothing else to live for, and he'll snare him any way he can. One day, Kevin hears about advanced plastic surgery and decides. Don't mention how I think it's like a TV advert or something. <laughs> decides he's going to change his face to like Nicolas Cage. Admit it. That's tempting for anyone. Kevin gets his face caged and goes off to live near where he thinks Cage is living. I stop calling him Troy at this point. I just start calling him <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Tries to follow Troy's pattern of check back to Troy, checking into <laughs> hotels under fake names and living off grid. Eventually, Kevin gets close to him and has a face off. Only problem is Kevin learns that as his pursuit's been unsuccessful, another FBI agent has been tracking Roy, and now he's found two of him. Does that oh, make sense to you? Okay. Troy and Kevin, a.k.a. fake Troy, now have to convince the FBI agent that they're the fake Troy to evade being captured. This turns into a farcical showdown of lies and deceit. Like one of those thought experiments where the, de- like, you know, like the devil only lies and then the other one only tells the truth and you're like, oh, what the fuck's going yeah. on? Kevin wins in the end by using something personal that only the real Troy would care deeply about and getting him to sort of flub it that way, like his rosebud kind of thing. E.g. he was obsessed with a teddy bear called Tony when he was wee or something. (laughs) Troy is captured, John Travolta gets his face reverted and meets up to explain to the woman he fell in love with during all this that he's not Nicolas Cage. (laughs) The end. So he stays as the other person's face? No, he gets his face back at the end. Right. Or Maybe he doesn't, I don't know. I've said that he does, though, so let's go with that. Okay. Uh, we've got similarities in there. Of course we do, Steve. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the, what we is... should use the face swap app thing to, like, so your face is on me and mine's <laughs> on you as well we're doing this. The entire time. <laughs> I'll or, end up winning, but it's you that's won. Or we could just say that we've done that and then just yeah. pretend. But I've kept my voice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> cool. Okay. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, what what was his crime? What was what did he do? Unspecified. Okay. Let's say he's a, a murderer. Okay. It's got to be something pretty bad. Something bad. Um, yeah. So basically, Travolta gets thrown off the case. So you get the higher up is searching for Troy, but when he gets there, he finds two Troys. That's yep. the sort of crux of it. And is there going to be a twist at the end where he actually kills the the good one? Could be. Could be. Sure. It's so open to anything. <laughs> Yes. Literally anything can happen. I'm excited to hear yours. I'm expecting to be really confused listening to this. Yeah, it's going to be the <laughs> same. I'm going to be confused. Okay. It's the 90s. It's New York. And one man is about to lose face. Nicholas Cage is down on his luck. Is a down on his luck detective who has spent years chasing John Travolta. A devious criminal genius who was responsible for the death of his wife. Nicholas Cage is hell-bent on revenge. There's only one problem. John Travolta's massive security team. (laughs) I would never guess that. (laughs) That's the only thing stopping him. (laughs) He's also got... I'm imagining he's like this... He's like a billionaire who could maybe have facial technology, facial recognition technology and shit, so he can't get past that. Cage becomes obsessed and is eventually struck off from the force. He blames Travolta for the for this as well, even though it was clearly his own fault for being a bit shite at his job. He's getting too obsessed with the case and that. Cage tries to track down Travolta, but after a few close scrapes with his henchman, the security team... There's always henchmen. There's always henchmen. That's John Malkovich. <laughs> uh, that could, uh, that could yeah. be like... Him, J.K. Simmons and Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Streisand. Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> uh, it's back to the drawing board. He decides to hire the best plastic surgeon money can buy <laughs> and gets him to surgically reconstruct his face to look exactly like Travolta's this works and he's able to sneak past his security and past the facial recognition cameras etc his plan is almost perfect but Travolta manages to get away by the skin of his teeth for some reason Travolta then goes to the same plastic surgeon and gets him to reconstruct his face to look exactly like Nick Cage fuck knows why the the two (laughs) (laughs) the two square off the two square off and probably some big imagine in like an industrial setting you know fucking something like that you don't think it's by a lock no it's not going to be outside this is like yeah I can imagine 
cages. <laughs> I can imagine cages and shit. Mm. That's his industrial. Well, ca- two two people looking like this <laughs> cage surrounded by cages. cages. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be cage yeah, in this movie. Wall to wall cages as well. <laughs> Uh, it's a game of cat and mouse Nick Cage eventually kills Travolta and cuts off his face then goes back to plastic surgeon and changes his face back to normal takes that as like a photo you take into a barber shop (laughs) can you get that (laughs) I love this please by the way that's me just so you know that is me do you remember you done this to me am I thinking was he cuts his face off so people don't think that he's dead right you kind of take a corpse back to a plastic surgeon and say, can you make him, can you change his face? <laughs> so you just cut his face off, you know? Easier, isn't it? Easier. Yeah. Cut out the middle of <laughs> <laughs> It's easier, isn't it? I think this could be like one of the most straightforward, uh, dumb movies that I'm confused by. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think this would be much... like a Thickles movie, but it'll still be too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> when I wake up from a nap and it's like I, I think he's been him the whole time it could be like maybe sci-fi like Total Recall type deal mm. I didn't guess that at all no. so it could be like transplanting bodies and shit it must be a little whiff of sci-fi about it yeah I think so right I don't know I can't wait to read what this is about yeah me too should we do bonuses yeah um, I'll go first first one he'll touch his new face in disbelief when he sees it for the first time oh uh. I'd doing give you, I'd bet you a hundred grand. hundred grand, he's doing all this, squeezing <laughs> his cheeks and all that. What the, what the hell? You fucking agreed to get the facial reconstructive <laughs> surgery, you should be surprised from, when you look different. <laughs> from the best plastic surgeon around. Travolta shags someone while he looks like Cage and he isn't sure whether to come clean or not, that it's not actually him. I did think at one point the other person would like go to like a wife or like a girlfriend yeah. and fuck shut up, I don't know, do something weird. Um, someone will check how many bullets they've got left and say there's only one left in the chamber. That's a it's classic. That, isn't it? They go, oh, yeah, one left. Only one, better make it count. That's just letting the audience know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if you know how movies That's work. That's showing and telling at the same <laughs> time. So everyone gets it. I've got, uh, Cage does a double take when he sees a guy that looks just like him, but he, he thinks it's like too crazy to be true, so he doesn't like run up to him or anything. First time he sees someone uh, looking like him, he's like, yeah, must be confused. Things, yeah. My last one. Someone will ask for a whiskey neat. Nice. My last one. I put this in as a placeholder, and I was like, I'll change that one. I can think of something better, but I obviously didn't. That's uh, what that was. Titties. Oh, that is lovely. In the nineties, t- as we keep learning, titties keep cropping up in films. So. Oh yeah, I think you'll see some bare arses, some Nick Cage arse, <sighs> Travolta arse. I think. I hope so. But will Travolta have Nick Cage's arse? Well, that's the big that's the question. question isn't that's it? the the moral that's quandary, <laughs> <laughs> philosophical quandary. <laughs> um, is Nick Cage's arse Travolta's arse? Yeah, like if you kept getting parts of Nick Cage swapped out for your own, like at what point do you cease to be yourself and you start being Nick Cage? That's, yeah, that's one of the great philosophical <laughs> questions, isn't it? <laughs> um, Mind blowing. Theme tune. What do you fancy? I don't know. I mean. It feels like it should be a bit of a mashup, really, doesn't it? Because mm, one of your switching. mashups, yeah. I've already, You've done lucky. that. Have you? You're, you're lucky. All right, good. Yeah, you're play that because I've actually got it right here, and I'm going to play it for you right now. And as I stared, I counted Webs from all the spiders Catching things and eating their insides Like indecision to call you And hear your voice of trees on Will you come home and stop this pain tonight? Stop this pain tonight Don't waste your time on me Done it again. Done it again. Fantastic. Mark? Best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think they'll say the title? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. 
I think it's cheesy enough. I'm going to say no. Okay. Put down no. Let's go off and watch this thing, man. Can't wait. I'm excited about this one. I think it'll be good fun. I'm actually excited, yeah. Should the makers good. of Face Off saw us coming. Big time. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Big Couple time. of rubes like me and you. We're, <laughs> we're queuing around the block for Face Off. <laughs> right. Let's 100%. find out in part two if they achieve it. Let's we were do into it. it. And we're back. We have just watched Face Off. If you've not seen it, here's a short synopsis. Sean Archer, an FBI agent, undergoes plastic surgery in order to impersonate and get hold of his son's killer and his arch enemy, Castor Troy. Trouble brews when Castor begins impersonating Sean. Mm. What did you think, Steve? Fucking wild premise. Insane premise. So insane. Good, though. Amazing. Loved it. <laughs> they do not make him like this anymore. <laughs> they do they? Don't. they really don't. What? Pissing about with their stupid superhero movies. When oh, this is what we want. And this is what you could be having. Exactly. Two, Give me ten of these over Avengers, man. Two stupid old white guys changing faces. That is what show business is all about <laughs> for me. Because I would love to have been in the the room when they pitched this. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> We've been in pitching scenarios, Steve. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, there's a lot of issues they have with things. Yeah, we a lot could of be nitpicking. like, we could be like, oh, basically we we watch films, but we guess what they are. And like, that's a bit high concept, actually. Yeah, I don't think people will get that's that. That's too much. It needs to be instantly gettable. What about John Travolta and Nicolas Cage <laughs> swap swap faces. faces and bodies and voices? Yeah, and that's like the that's only the start of it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even touch the side. Yeah, that is page one of this script. Is, he, is John Travolta, is Nicholas Cage and John Travolta's body going to be really creepy to his daughter and his wife? Of 100%. course he is. Of course he is. He's such a psycho, he will blow his cover to try and fuck his own daughter <laughs> <laughs> in this movie. That's how psycho this guy is. This guy is off his tits. And it's like insane because he goes into the jail. Cause I, I didn't realise this is what the plot would have been. He changes the body to get information from his brother. Mm. I thought he was changing his face to sneak by his security guards. Right. Which kind of... I thought he was just doing it for a laugh, no? That is mostly <laughs> what, it, what it is, but they've said he needs to get information from his brother. The guy wakes up from a coma and is like, I better just oh, yeah. put his face on my face Just now. pop his face on me, I reckon, and we'll get going. There's only one choice. Put his face on my face. <laughs> it's like one of your plots. Like, there's only one problem. He has to get somebody else's face on his face. Yeah. Yeah, wild. I thought Insane. Travolta and Cage were phenomenal. So good. I Very mean, good. nothing flat about their performances. No. John Candy could learn a couple of things oh, from these boys. John Candy has to watch <laughs> Face Off. If he was, God rest his soul, yep, if he always. was still alive today, <laughs> Our thoughts and prayers. I would send face off to John Candy and say, well, brush up in your John acting. Candy and John Goodman could have done a remake where they swap faces. That, that would have been, been good. incredible. <laughs> what a film. That would be so good. I think the best bits were when John Travolta had to act like Nicolas Cage as a psycho. Yeah. They really made me laugh. And good. he was good at it. He was fantastic. He was good at it. And then Nicolas Cage being... I think Nicolas Cage was trying to fuck with John Travolta and make, being, make his job as hard as, as possible. As hard as yeah. possible. And then he... From him going to John Travolta, I don't think he quite nailed getting, like... The nuance of Travolta. Yeah, but yeah. it was still good. He was yeah. still quite... He kind of reined it in a wee bit. But it was I mean, still it's a bit hard... Over the top. It's a big ask of an actor. That, yeah. That role. Yeah. Because there was like a scene where he does drugs, and I think they they just put that scene in there so he could act a bit fucking mental. Yeah, he must have went to his agent. I need to act more mental as John Travolta. <laughs> right, we'll make you do drugs. I'm only then... doing this if I get to be absolutely fucking bananas <laughs> the whole time. The bit where there's like the choir and he's dressed like a priest and he's like feeling up that girl. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. It's insane. <laughs> I loved it. It was funny. It's so fucking Too stupid. long, sure. Oh, of course. Way yeah. too long. Here's a question. What Out of the Nicolas Cage films that we've done, what do you Is prefer? it just this and Con Air? Yeah. That's a tricky one. They're both solid. It's very solid. I'd say maybe this. I think premise-wise this, but... Con Air was a reason, romp as well, though. Yeah, I just enjoyed Con Air. It was so fucking idiotic. Yeah. It wasn't highbrow, Connor. No. 
I'd actually weirdly I watched the new Nicolas Cage movie the night before I watched this. It's oh called, yeah. Um, what's it called? The unbearable weight of massive being, talent. Yeah. Being John. Being, me, being Nicolas Cage, it's called. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was good as well. Recommend yeah. it. Very fun. And you like that weird pig one as well, don't you? Pig was fantastic. Yeah. I've not watched. That. I'm a fan. You're I like a fan Nicolas of Nick. Cage. I used no. to hate the guy, but now yeah. I'm one. I'm one round. He's a good boy. He's one Nicolas round. Cage. Yeah, I think you'd like the He's new one. He's charmed cool. me. But uh, weirdly, because obviously I knew I had to do this, and I just went on a whim to the cinema. It, uh, it references this so there's like bits in the film that I watched the day before that reference this film that I watched the day after so I should have done it the other way around yeah but both very good I have recommend to say. yes have you seen any other of his, of his films <laughs> do you want me to name all list? of his Hammer films the plus 15 uh, kick ass yeah me too that's about it okay end of list good <laughs> <laughs> the people that did press plus 15 are like what even happened there I've probably seen more but I just don't want to they're going to be missing the all piss. the points now <laughs> <laughs> just fucking Roger out of nowhere <laughs> shall we come I on to I tell you points? Roger would get on well with Nicholas Cage similar characters very similar I would like to see Nicholas Cage play Roger in an adaptation of what's the script <laughs> You could play me, I and would, Cage yeah. can play Roger. You play producer Mark. Paddy plays himself, easy. Of course. I'll just get like an exec producer credit. <laughs> Happy. Um, yeah, do you want to come on to points, or have you got yeah. more shit to say? No, I've got zero to say about me this, too. apart from it was a daft laugh. Yep. That should also, have been the whole of part two of this episode, just two words. But also, it is insane that this is such a wild premise, but... It wasn't like Conair, where it was over the top. It was just this. It was like very. This is the premise. Get on board with it, and yeah. that, and let's just have a laugh. Yeah, like every single decision was like, what would be a laugh to do? Yeah, I respect that. But don't play it. They as played if it's it straight, a laugh. Yeah, yeah, play it straight. Which I think is like why it was good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. So points. I have not got many. So the year, uh, was nineteen ninety seven. I had nineteen ninety two. I had 96. You're one up then. Mm-hmm. Rotten Tomatoes was 92%. I had 65%. I had 83, so we're back to level. Disappointed in myself for that. Let yourself down there. You should have had faith in this premise. <laughs> yeah, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just think this sounds like an Oscar winning film. <laughs> uh, run time. Was an, it was a baggy 2 hours 18. It was. I had 151. I had 146. I'm one up. Certificate totally. I didn't look into. Couldn't be asked. It was 18. I had 15. I had 15. Oh, it was a 15. I, well, this is a discussion. Caster Troy was the name of uh, Nicholas Cage. I guess the name Troy. What are you saying to that? As a second name or first name? What? Did you say Troy would be a second name or didn't, a first name? Didn't specify. I'll give you it. Could have been called Troy Leopold. Because oh, when do we ever guess Troy? I think, yeah, exactly. I think I'm it's so rare to actually get a name. And when it's Troy like as well. That, yeah, that, you, that, that should actually be <laughs> enough for ding, ding, ding. to win, to win the whole episode. However, you, I'm pretty sure I tried to get like Butler and it was like Giant Butler or something like that. <laughs> and you never, gave, you never gave me <laughs> The BFG as Giant Butler. <laughs> Well, that was, hold on, that was weeks ago, and we were arguing, this would have pissed listeners off, actually, because we were arguing about, uh, it was Tall Butler, and I didn't give you it, but I had Butler, which was right, but I just forgot, I didn't mark it down. Oh, did you? I should have got a fucking point. (laughs) It wasn't until I watched it back, like, four weeks later. Arguing for points that are actually against your better interests. Yeah, yeah, just sitting home, pissed off at my own podcast for the first time. That's funny. So I think I'm two up. Mm Mm-hmm. Let me come back at you. Steve. Please do. Let me come back at Please. you. Please. He'll touch his new face in disbelief when he sees it for the first time. I imagine he did do that. I can picture it. I mean, I watched this thing about three or four weeks ago me now. Me too. I basically don't remember. I can't really I remember just at all. The whole time. Yeah, but I'm sure that happened. Yeah, I'll give you. I think he did do that. Yeah. I'm back to one up. Do you want to give, give another? It's the 90s. I've got it's the 90s. One man is about to lose face. <laughs> Nah, you're not having that. <laughs> Fuck off. What does that even mean? He's he loses lose... his face. So you literally mean that he's about to lose his face. <laughs> the one thing we all fucking knew about face off. But it's also a clever Lo- pun, isn't it's it? It's very clever. <laughs> and it's... What do you mean by that, though? He's, he's going to be embarrassed. No, he's going to lose face. When you lose hit. face, you're embarrassed, right? No, when you lose face, you let your face slip. <laughs> what? You lose face... Oh, you, you kind of lose your temper, don't you? 
No. No, I think lose face means you've been humiliated. No. Yeah. Is it? I'll get a fucking definition up. It's pretty humiliating to lose your face to. <laughs> and then have to put on John. <laughs> Not when you deliberately face. have to do it. For yeah. your work. Stu, you're absolutely at it. No, I'm you taking are. back Troy. You are. <laughs> uh, how about he decides to hire the best plastic surgeon money can buy? Uh, I suppose so. Yeah. It does? Yeah, alright. Back to level. Yeah. I've got he's trailing an on the run fugitive but being bested at every turn. Hmm. Mm. Mm. You think? Yeah. Okay. Why was wrong with that? Okay, fine. Fine. So I'm just not said petty. Fucking lose, lost face. I'm not petty like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so after this is follows on from he gets his a new face basically, okay. and quite uh, a lot of your plot involves that, doesn't it? And then I've said this works, and he's able to sneak past his security. Yeah, does that happen? Well, he, he's in the lair with all the baddies and he does drugs, so they don't know that. Okay, and they're security, are they? Oh. <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> right, okay. You could fine. say they're security. Back to level. I've got that Troy uh, is able to live under the radar, being blase and cool, and sometimes getting complacent for kicks. What well, one's Troy? Fucking Nicholas Cage, <laughs> the mad bastard. He was sheer complacency. He was really rubbing everyone's face in it. He wasn't exactly trying to, to go discreetly, was he? No, no, he wasn't at all. I'll give you that. <laughs> also, Stu, I must uh, concede. I Thanks, man. thought, remembering back, I thought that it was going to be John Travolta as the baddie, Nicolas Cage as the goodie, and then they swapped, but you mm. believed it was going to be Nicolas Cage baddie, which was correct. Yeah. John Travolta I'm goodie. fucking idiot. Looking back, that's an insane... Thing yeah, you were quite think. strong about that though in part one, I seem to recall. You for some reason you were like, I looked at that poster, he looks confused. like a goodie, he looks like a baddie. I was confused because John Travolta had a wee smile and I thought he must be Maybe it was Nicolas Cage's smile. I know, but, but then that, then I'm thinking they've swapped bodies on the poster. It's confusing for us this film, isn't it? We basically don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably a very clever allegory. The whole time I was like, you know, I'm a smart guy, I get stuff. And then I'm watching it thinking, oh, he's actually being Nicolas Cage right now. <laughs> That's on. why he's acting so erratically. Wait a minute. What? Who's he What's again? What's going on? What is? Have they swapped bodies? I they have. <laughs> <laughs> and who's that? Is he swapped bodies as well? No, that's just his brother. That's right. just his pal. Right, okay. I'm one up still, I think. Yeah. I've got one day Kevin hears about advanced plastic surgery and decides he's going to change his face to look like Nicolas Cage. Well, yep, yeah, okay. That's because I already said that. Mm hmm. Uh, for some reason, Travolta then goes to the same plastic surgeon and gets him to reconstruct his face to look exactly like <laughs> yeah, that. That is for some reason that did happen. <laughs> so, factor one. I've got it ends with a farcical showdown of lies and deceit. Yep. The two square off in probably some big industrial setting. Yeah, I think it was right. And that was at the start. Yeah, yeah. Back to one again. I've got one and a half more points. I've got zero other points. Excellent so. news. <laughs> you My one was that um, he uses something personal that he would care deeply about, like his rosebud, which was his kid getting shot. Mm. Not bad, eh? And then I would have had a real argument with you about titties. It was, it was <laughs> cartoon titties. Uh, I don't know how I feel about you saying that his son is like a sled. But what was rosebud again? That was a yeah, sled, it was wasn't a sled. it? sled. I'm not saying it was exactly the same, <laughs> but in, in this context, he was. He was a bit of a sled, that kid. <laughs> it's a sled that got shot in the head. It was a sled that got shot in the head. Same plot device. Good rhyme. I'd say that, like, you know, people saying, oh, that's his rosebud is quite a common thing. See, whenever they say that, they're not meaning he's going to sail down a hill on it. <laughs> they are no, sled. I'm not saying he's an actual sled, but I'm saying <laughs> rosebud is an item it's it's you know it's a thing rather than a nah, human it's being it's a vibe it's a philosophy i don't i don't agree with who made that you, piece you've, of you've shit? had long-standing problems with metaphors orson we've been... wells is a wank man i hate that <laughs> is it orson, orson wells couldn't have done face off <laughs> no, no never way. no way as it was it orson wells that done that he's a he's a prick man <laughs> I I was on Twitter and someone was like, "Oh, look at all these funny things Orson Welles has said about being all these people." Wanker. He's just been a big drunk prick. Was it him that was slugging off Woody Allen? 
Uh, that. Well, that that's was funny. Good that's good, though. Yeah. No, I'll, give, I'll give him that. I stopped clock and all that. He's yeah. Right. But he slagged bloody someone else. I was like, that's out of order. Somebody you like, they slagged like Rory Scovel or something. <laughs> yeah. Slagged John Mullane. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I win. You win. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Seems really begrudging this week. Nice. You, you you always claim that you're not petty and then you always sound so fucking hurt when I win. Even oh, though you win most of them. I'm sorry that I care. <laughs> I put my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that you care about your podcast. Um, put a lot of work into this. Should we get our critics in? Of course we shall. Let's play the jingle. Critic reviews. Oh, you look different, Paddy. Are you? Is that Roger? <laughs> no, good? it's me. You daft bastard. It's Paddy. You were right first time. I've got Roger's face on. Sure. Oh, Sorry, right. But... That's what I'm confused. Why have you got Roger's face? Well, on? I was inspired by the movie, wasn't I? Bit of uh, <laughs> advanced technology. <laughs> Always at the the height of science, Paddy. I thought, you know, <laughs> fuck it. I'll have Roger's face this week. Why not? So, I've got the money. Because we're doing face off. You thought, why not do exactly what they did in the film, but in real life? Swap with Roger's face. I've always considered Roger to be my sort of Nicolas Cage. Mm. He's we're at two sides of the same coin, me and Roger. I thought sure. so. This week, you know, sure. got got his face on my face. But you've kept your own voice. I've kept my own voice, sure, because that's what that's where I make a lot of my money. The well, voice in film that was a bit, a bit silly when they changed voices. I thought. Would have been more fun if... <laughs> you know, I forgot they did that. So technically, yeah, maybe I should be doing a Roger impression right now. But it's too, we're too far down the road now. I'll, I'll keep talking like Paddy. <laughs> it's very confusing, this film. <laughs> if you want to do a Roger... Because they had to be chip to change your voice. So why don't you switch on your chip and do a Roger <laughs> accent then? Hold on, let me just switch on my chip. <laughs> All right, boys! <laughs> All right, Paddy. I love come? this film! <laughs> So hold on, let Is me it get, loud enough? Let me get this straight. You are still Paddy McGuinness. Aye! <laughs> no likey, no lighty. But you're in Roger Egbert's body. That's right, aye. Because the film that we watched, Face <laughs> Off, is what that's what the premise. <laughs> you're absolutely bang right, sir. Just in case no one gets this back home. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> Just to be absolutely crystal clear, that's Paddy McGuinness and Roger Egbert's body. And what you need to remember is, <laughs> Roger looks a lot like Steve, <laughs> and Stuart looks like Steve. So it works. The whole thing just works, it's flawless. <laughs> well, I'm very glad, uh, Paddy, have you got a review of this beautiful film? Oh, I've just switched my chip off then. All right, oh, okay, God. thank I you. I don't know how he does that, I've nearly ripped my vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> For 30 seconds. Well, I, I, I watched the film this week, obviously. Yep, obviously. However, I, I didn't want to do... Well, I couldn't be arsed writing a review. Okay. In short. <laughs> but also because you, you had other stuff going on. You well, had to change your face and all that, didn't you? For the last... Yeah, I've been busy. <laughs> for the last few weeks, you know, I've been trying to sort of scupper Roger's reviews by writing the sort of puns that I expect him to write. Yes. Having lived in his body for a week, I started to appreciate the man behind the face. <laughs> And I was in his shoes. I was in his everything. Yeah. And I thought, you know, it's not nice, actually, to try and Did you go into his, someone. his home? I lived in his house, yeah. Yeah, how was that? Absolute dump. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be the Buddy, you know, I'm doing all right. I'm 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 living in mansion. Yeah. It was like, it's kind of like wife swap, but <laughs> just for yourself. But Str yeah. Very strange. Just swatch, yeah. But anyway, I, I felt bad sort of stealing his reviews and sort of ripping him off. So I thought, and also, uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but the ITV aren't commissioning Take Me Out again. Oh, so fuck. there's I'm a hole in my that. diary and I need new TV ideas. Right. So, I was watching the movie and I thought, instead of writing a review, I'll write a TV pitch for a new game show that I can host. Okay. And hopefully, maybe someone at home's watching and they can commission that. <laughs> okay. Is that brilliant. okay? That and I thought, great. I can get you a notes. You work in the industry. You can oh, yeah. you can help me with like this. Time. We can do it like a bit of a workshop. I'm big in the industry, Paddy. <laughs> you are. <laughs> right, here we go. So this is Paddy's pitch. Okay. Based on Face Off. Uh, so it's for, for a dating reality game show, also called Face Off. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Where couples are matched up in round one. In round two, they undergo advanced facial modeling technology to swap faces with the date for the second date to see if they get on better and understand each other on a deeper level like I have with Roger this week. Okay. Usually in round two, they shag just out of curiosity because like, well, it's like you get to shag yourself. Who doesn't want that? Mm, right? right. And ITV2 will lap that up. They'll love that. <laughs> on date three, they revert back to the normal faces and see if they've still got the spark. And so far, so far, you know, kind of normal. Yep. The twist is, here's the, here's the Shyamalan twist, Steve. Right. 
There's the final face-off round. This takes place five years later. <laughs> the couples who've matched up on the show have been together for five years, and that's when <laughs> we get a member of the production team to, to stalk them on a night out. We get someone, a stooge, to <laughs> get the face of their partner, and they basically try and get them to cheat on their partner right. with someone who looks exactly like their partner. They've got 30 minutes to work out if it's your boyfriend or if it's just someone from ITV2 <laughs> doing a shit impression with his face. Is that a bit like Golden Balls, like Splitter Steel? Splitter Steel. It's a, it's a classic Golden Ball scenario. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And ITV, ITV went for that. <laughs> so yeah, basically, if they realise it's not their partner and they don't cheat on them, they win 40 grand on a trip to Malaysia. Confetti rains down. Right. However, if they fall for the new person and cheat on their partner, they get fuck all and they get pilloried in the press as scum. <laughs> And presumably a tough time at home <laughs> under a lot of questioning. Uh, the episodes are two hours long. There's a lot to fit in. Uh, there's a live studio audience and a sponsorship time with Dormio. What do you say? Beautiful. I like it a lot. I've got a couple of questions. Sure. Fire. Sounds like an expensive... <laughs> an expensive... Right now, I'll level with you. Right now, the technology is not cheap. Yeah. But you know how it goes with new technologies. You know, the That's price... Big, it big budget on ITV2, though. ITV2, though. Rolling the Keiko son. So the first episode is going to be have it'll have to be filmed five years previously to begin. It's with. a long burner. This show is. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, you know, it's <laughs> it's not a flash fry. It's a slow cooker situation. Right, this this okay. idea. A wee bit like a Boyhood, the film they've filmed it's, it. Well, yeah, I time. watched that for the, for this show, of course. And yeah. I loved Boyhood, and it's that's one of my favourites. And yeah, it's like a sort of. Horny boyhood. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, no further questions. I think signed. Great. I, I think that well, if anyone's be... watching from ITV Two, drop me a line. I think that should be on everyone's screens right away. And uh, but the only thing <laughs> right is, away in, right away, right away in five years, there might be copyright issues with the name Face Off. So you, I'll might take away the to... forward slash. It can just be like Face Dash Off. That'd be fine. We'll get around that easy. Right, That's okay. the least of the problems. Paddy McGuinness's Face Off, something like yeah, that. something like that. Or like I don't, I can give it to Ben Shepherd or something if, if that helps <laughs> to get it over the line. I'll be an exec. Great, brilliant. I love it. All good. <laughs> I've got I'm, uh, my mooks outside. I've got to go, man. Sorry, yeah, I, I won't take up any more of your time. Thanks for that, Paddy. Thanks for having me. And look out for Paddy McGuinness slash Ben Shepherd's face off on ITV Two. See you there. Five years time. Set, <laughs> set the sky plus. <laughs> there we go. Wow. There he goes. Interesting fella. Very interesting. Yeah, I can't believe that he looked this bit of image Just of Roger, like Roger. There. Yeah. Unbelievable what technology can do. I'm glad I wasn't in the room for that, to be honest, because I struggled with one Roger. If there was if there was two, a Paddy Roger hybrid, that's like a real monster to create. Next week, I want Paddy as Roger and Roger as Roger, both doing the, the same voice. Time. <laughs> shouting over yeah. dueling banjos. Style. Yeah, exactly. Maybe well. we should do that for the intro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to that. Um, speaking of Roger, I mean, we should hear from the man himself, of the course. man of the hour. Yeah, what's he up to? You got him there? Yeah, there, Rog. Critic reviews. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Hiya. You, uh, you look different this week, Rog, if you don't mind me saying. Well, you've probably already heard the party. <laughs> but I we have, went yeah. for a wee experiment this week. Oh, right. I swapped faces with well. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't want to, you know, I was waiting to hear it from you. I didn't want to presume. <laughs> and the surgeon wasn't that great. It was a, a an it is on deal, so it's a wee bit <laughs> a wee bit ski with. It looks like his was pretty good, but you, yours is like more of a wish version yeah, of, uh, <laughs> of. Well, he's got the money to pay for a good plastic surgeon. I had to go on it is on. Right. Didn't I? Well, you got you got to get a bargain where you can get him, man. Aye, of course. Um, how are you? Are you pleased with the results? No. No. <laughs> no. I'm no. I, what I'm pleased with though, we've done a wee wife swap scenario. Yep. I've been living in a mansion all week. Oh yeah. Changed the locks. He's not getting back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one of your hairbrain schemes. He, I reckon he's gonna figure out what's happened. He doesn't know yet. Don't tell him. I okay. think he's speeding away in his merc. He'll just he'll go into his mansion, he'll see my bob sled sitting <laughs> in the driveway. <laughs> and he'll feel like what the hell's going on. What here. The, I think I think as soon as he sees that bobsleigh, he'll know exactly what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I mean what have you been up to apart from having Paddy's face I can't help but notice you've kept your normal voice what Roger. do you mean apart from this is a pretty big procedure Stu. it's a pretty big deal 
Do you want me to change my wee voice as well? I've got a chip. You got one of those chips, yeah. You give it a go, man. However, like I say, it's not been done by the best guy, so it might not be the best voice. <laughs> they couldn't get his exact voice, no? Here we go. I'm turning on the chip now. Good. Hello, son. How you doing? <laughs> All right. Oh, God. It's, it's bloody Roger Egbert here. <laughs> oh, and, uh, okay, so <laughs> have you have you during the week? Sorry, I'm, it's very confusing for me. This during the week, have you been speaking as yourself or as Paddy? Oh, I've been doing a bit of both, son. <laughs> doing a bit of both. You're been like going to Sainsbury's. Been doing all right. It's me, yeah. Get get discount. Get discount in Sainsbury's because I do the voice. And then when I can't be asked with it, turn it off. Shh. All right, boys, I'm back. <laughs> Good enough. I need to phone my mum. Mo, it's me, don't worry. It's no Paddy McGuinness. And then your mum, obviously she can't hear you on the phone, so she says, like, why are you even bringing up Paddy McGuinness? <laughs> yeah. Or are you exactly. FaceTiming her, maybe? I, I, I usually FaceTime, but <laughs> she gets confused easily. So. At least if you're trying to, I don't know if you will, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if you want to swap your face back to your original face, because you are Paddy now, maybe, because mm. he's getting a bunch of freebies, I imagine, you might get some free, free surgery. Well... You're absolutely correct. I can go. I can now go back to the the good surgeon and get my face good, put on properly. Yeah. Whereas he's fucked. He's got Roger's face, and Aye. he's gonna be paying through the nose. Exactly. To get at his own level. Because Paddy doesn't have a bank card. He keeps all his money under his mattress. <laughs> right. He doesn't he trust banks. Suspicious. <laughs> so, so I've got all his money now. Right. I'm rich okay. as fucks too. I'm you seem it. like you've had a great week, man. I'm actually just going to keep the face. <laughs> I'm just keeping it. And uh, I assume you watched the film this week. I didn't have the chance to. <laughs> but what I did was read the, read the Wikipedia. And okay. Come up with a review. All of right, the based on that. Brilliant. Well, I'm excited to hear it. Right. Take it away. Here we go. Here. Do you want me to do it in my voice or Paddy's? Dealer's choice. I'll do my voice. Here we go. Face Off is the film about two guys who swap faces. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell by my face that I bloody loved every second <laughs> of it. For the listeners, you really can't tell from... You Roger's tell. Paddy's face is lit up. All of my facial muscles are really ha- happy right now. John Travolta was anything but travolting as the FBI agent Sean Archer, where he was as sharp as an arrow. In fact, this role can only add another string to his bow. Nicholas was like a caged tiger in the role as Castor Troy, a vindictive arsehole who was always the one to cast her for stone. <laughs> Nicholas Cage and the Grease Lightning Star are perfect on screen duo. They go together like Rama Lama Lama Kadingy De Dingy Dongs. Ding Ding Do. Remembered forever like Shuba. Jawaba waba, yippity boom de boom. <laughs> chang chang, changity chang shabop. That's the way it should be. Wahoo, yeah. <laughs> Arguably, this film is just a weird retelling of Freaky Friday. It doesn't mean to say that it's low hanging fruit. Lohan, Lindsay Lohan. Mm, that, that was a reach. <laughs> Go back to the grease stuff. <laughs> Uh, if anyone has anything negative to say about this, all I've got to say is talk to the hand, because the face off ain't listening. <laughs> Roger Rakes has certified faceless eggs, 98 eggs out of 101. Wow. There, there we, we go. go. Thank you very much for that, Roger. Thank you. <laughs> I need to go. Soon. You gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go as soon as possible. All right. Well, I'll let you get off. No further, no further questions. I think Paddy's phoned the police on me. He wants his face back. Right. And his house. And his house. He's <laughs> More importantly, his house. Right. right. I'll let you go, Roger. Nice oh, to see you. Thanks, guys. Be see interesting you to see what you look like next week. Bye. <laughs> see you, mate. Bit of a collector's item there from Roger. That was Jesus. an interesting instalment. Wow. Very intense. Do you think he's it... seen the movie Grace? I don't think so. I don't think he's seen it. <laughs> Read the Wikipedia, maybe. Read the Wikipedia. Um, well, I don't think he's ever heard Paddy McGuinness speak either. Uh, I don't know. All right, impression. I, well, he's watching so many films, I doubt he's on ITV too much, Roger. That's true. Um, true. Still, lovely to hear from him. I look forward to hearing him next week. Yes. Shall we rate the film and get out of here? Let's do it. Yep. Uh, you go first. I thought it was a daft laugh. It was too long. It kind of lost me a bit in like action movie sequences where I'm just not that bothered what's happening. But it was mm. like really fun. Yep. 
and you got to respect that. I'm going to give it 89% Rotten Tomatoes. That's high praise. It was class. That's high praise. Um, I'm going to give it 8.5. I am Steve B. It's good. It was good. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you in the outro. Thank you for listening and watching. See you in the outro. So, Stu, what an episode. Wowie, man. That was a good one. Intense, insane, <laughs> incredibly funny. Yeah, and that's just the film, not even the podcast. <laughs> hey, yo, this guy. Why didn't you come <laughs> up with those ziggers on. on the intro? <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed it, you can support us. How, Stephen? Patreon.com forward slash. What's the script? Uh-huh. And you can subscribe <laughs> as, as little as £3 a month. You'll get an extra bonus video episode every month, plus early access to yes. every episode. They'll come out on a Sunday instead of a Thursday. We just filmed the bonus episode for Patreon. It was a lot of fun. We basically, last week's episode, or a few weeks back, was Les Miserables. Yes, Les Mis. Les Miserables. And we done a quiz about Les Mis called, called Les, Les quiz. quiz. Very clever. Very clever. You probably get it, you smart people. And very happy with that. I just <laughs> love that applause now. It wasn't there. just that. We were doing characters pissing about. I think we got... Uh, I think we heard for quite a lot from Roger. Mm-hmm. So if you want bonus Roger, get us over on patreon.com forward slash what's the script for three pounds a month. Yes. You can also please tell your friends. That's like the most important thing, right? We're trying to get something cooking here. So if you enjoy the show... It would mean a lot to us if you recommended it to people who you think might enjoy it. Yeah, we want more watchers, listeners, subscribers. We want it all, guys. We want the world, don't we, Steve? Give it to us. <laughs> You've got the you power. can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever ever else you listen. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. That always helps us. Yeah. Anything else? Follow us on Twitter. And Insta. And Instagram. We've got an Instagram now. We made... L- it was cool of us to make the Instagram after we'd recorded about five episodes. Oh, yeah, big time. So we didn't, don't even mention it for the first five. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's a, a new Instagram where we put up clips and stuff. If you can share the clips and stuff, that always helps us as well. And, so, by the way, some of those clips oh, popping off on Mama Reels. Mia. One's got, like, hundreds of likes. <laughs> yeah. You could say. You could say that stuff. I don't. You could say because it's true. <laughs> you could say there's hundreds of likes. I don't know why. Likes. I don't know what hashtag I put on that one, <laughs> on but one it did a, did a job. Man, it's just the fucking great banter (laughs) (laughs) it's just wall to wall great banter Banter. isn't it it is and that's about it right aye fuck's sake what more do you want from us google us (laughs) fucking idiots man they just want we can't give you intro and outro gold do you know what they are Steve pigs they're cheeky (laughs) cheeky they're very cheeky I don't know if you've ever mentioned on this but whenever you know sometimes I film stuff with Steve and (laughs) He literally is obsessed with calling me cheeky and calling things <laughs> cheeky. If you can't think of something to say in a scene, you just immediately, first thought, first go to is, you, oh, oh, you're always you're cheeky. You're just so cheeky. And whenever I need to edit something we've done together, it's just me cutting out you calling me cheeky 180 <laughs> times in an hour. <laughs> what movie, Stephen, are we going to try and guess the plot of next week? Well, I'll give you a clue. Please. You can be my long lost pal. It's not the bodyguard, is it? It is. It is indeed. I know the bodyguard soundtrack when I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Next it's week, the bodyguard. We're doing the bodyguard. Thank you very much. Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> it's not even right. It's Paul, Paul, Paul Simon. Paul Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the Simon and Garfunkel. The layers of clangor. He was Garfunkel, like... wasn't he? Are you joking? <laughs> yes. Yeah, good. I never know you anymore. <laughs> Next week, we're going to guess the bodyguard. Thank you for listening and or watching. Have a great week. Have a great week. Bye.